a lot of people who play the game really want to see Pluto or Spluto in the game. So today I'm going to go through the steps to add Spluto. And you could use these same steps to add any kind of planet you want to, um, even like a even bigger gas giant or an asteroid or whatever. The first step is going to be always make a backup of the of your installation folder. You don't want to actually work out of where the game is is actually installed. So make a copy of that, paste it somewhere else. I'm I'm working out of this folder C Dev, which is where I typically put all of my uh, development stuff. So go into Simple Rockets. And there's really only one file you need to modify to add a planet, and it is smoldersystem.xml. So this is might be kind of self-explanatory, some of the things in here. These are all the planets that are in the game. So you can look at, like, this is Mercury here. And it has all the information about Mercury. It has the gravity, the radius, the color, all that stuff. Um, there's another tag here, which is the orbit, which defines exactly how the orbit looks. And these are the uh, orbital parameters. And you can look that up on Wikipedia to find out what all these things mean. But since Simple Rockets is two-dimensional, I'm only using four out of the six. Uh, there's also a terrain element that is going to determine how rocky the terrain is and, um, I guess, the maximum height of peaks and overall bumpiness and also how it looks, which is the texture here. And you can make your own textures if you wanted to. I'm just going to reuse um, probably the one from Smoon for Pluto or Spluto. So I'm gonna, it's easiest to start with an existing planet. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy Smurkery, go down to the bottom, I'm gonna paste it. There's the name Spluto, and then we need to know what the gravity is on Pluto, which Wikipedia is the best place to find out this information. It looks like the equatorial surface gravity is 0.658 meters per second squared. So change this to, so that's really low, that's even, uh, significantly less than Smoon. The Smoon is 1.6. See the radius is the mean radius is 1,153 kilometers. So radius here in the game is actually in meters. So, and this is kilometers. So that's how many meters it would be. And actually, everything is 10% of the original size. So I'm going to change this to I'm going to delete a zero to divide it by 10. So we're, we're working with um, a radius of 115,300 meters. Let's change the icon. We'll just use the Smoon icon, which this icon is what is displayed in the sandbox mode when you're, when you're picking the planet you want to launch from. And I'm just going to use Smoon. You can make uh, you can make your own if you wanted to. Let's change the description. Let's say uh, the old planet that everybody loves and misses and now we need to put in the orbital elements the the best place to find this is once again Wikipedia you can see here um, the W is argument of perihelion I think I already have it highlighted there it is 113 degrees and I actually use radians in the game so I'm gonna go ahead and convert this to radians using good old Google. There we go. So 1.98, whatever, radians. Eccentricity is right here. So that's zero eccentricity would be a perfectly circular orbit. So 0.24 is actually that's fairly elliptical. Prograde equals one just means that it's going to rotate counterclockwise around the sun like all the other planets do. A is a semi-major semi axis. Here we go. Ah. And this is in kilometers, so i got to add three zeros to convert it to meters, and then delete one to divide by 10. The last one here is the true anomaly, and I'm just going to use the current true anomaly of Pluto, which is, the true anomaly is the position of the planet along its orbit. So I've looked that up on Wolfram Alpha, and currently it is here, 0.9842 radians, and that is in radians. 
What did I say? 984. Okay. So the terrain element down here, we have um, the max height, which is how tall, like the tallest peaks can be. I'm going to leave that the same. The noise is how bumpy and rocky the surface is. And I'm going to actually double this. I'm kind of curious what that looks like. It might look kind of horrible, but um, for the texture, I'm going to actually use the one that we used for Smoon. And the color, this is the color below the crust, the surface crust. So I'm going to change that. And this is red, green, and blue. So this is actually going to be kind of a gray, a really, really dark gray. And okay, now let's see if Simple Rockets works now. Let's see if you can see the new planet. Go down here to sandbox mode, and it says could not. <laughs> uh, the error message is kind of messed up, but it says it can't find smoon.png in the texture atlas. So let's go see what it's talking about. Smoon.png. So I use that for the icon. So I think that actually, for that icon, I actually called it moon.png. If I look up at smoon, yeah, here's smoon. It's actually using moon.png. So I, I just had the wrong name for that icon. Let's try it again. Scroll to the bottom. Let's go to sandbox mode all the way to the end. Here's Spluto. Okay, so it loaded it correctly this time. And let's go ahead and check it out. I have a really small rocket here set up. Surface gravity is so low. Even the smallest engine should be more than enough to, to get around on this thing. Let's check and see how rocky it is. I, I made that... I doubled the rockiness from... Um, from Smercury's, and Smercury is already really rocky, so that's kind of ridiculous looking. It's so jagged. And, um, let's also look at the map view, too. So here's Pluto, and zoom out really far. You see it's at, it is on the outskirts of the solar, of the smaller system, and the orbit is really elliptical. It looks like it's by far the most elliptical orbit in the in the system. So, um, one thing to keep in mind is that if you happen to make planets that are really close together, even if their SOIs are overlapping or if the planets themselves hit each other, that won't they won't do anything in this game. I don't consider those collisions. So the the gravity will not influence each other. There's no collisions. Um, everything is kind of computed. Um, itself on its own orbital path. It just ignores everything else. Um, and again, that's you know for performance reasons, and it really it really complicates things a lot if you start um, having planets that are you know influencing each other with gravity and things like that. That's the basics on how to add a planet to Simple Rockets. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope, I hope to see some new planets out there. Thanks for watching.